Today we're going to take a look at an introduction to Canadian silver dollars and especially commemoratives and all of the different kinds of packaging that they come in. Let's take a look. We're going to look at all of the coins and the boxes that we have on the screen right now, except for the stuff over here. That's for another video. Canadian dollars over the last uh, 35 years or so have been the, uh, the loony dollar, but before that, they had the Voyager dollar. Here is a, a Voyager dollar that I recently picked up. I, I really do like the look of this. And uh, so we've got the portrait of the Queen on one side. And this is a proof version of the, uh, the Voyager dollar. Uh, these are, of course, really common. But um, it's got the look of uh, two men in a, uh, a boat here. Uh, the man on the left would be the Voyager. I guess you'd call that an explorer. explorer. And uh, the man on the right is an uh, indigenous... Uh, I always have trouble with that word. Indigenous man. And uh, the two of them are floating down the river, going to... Uh, not sure where they're going to, but behind them is an island. And on top of that island is a tree. And there's some rays that are... Uh, coming, uh, just filling up the background. Uh, the boat itself uh, has some merchandise on it, and the box right there has the initials HB for Hudson Bay, which was one of the original companies that was uh, in Canada. Took a moment to fix the lighting here so we can see that... Uh, canoe a little bit better. You can find that dollar in uh, clad sets just like this one. Uh, these have almost no uh, collector premium to them. I picked this one up for about $2.25 uh, 20 years ago, and this is the 1979 set. The uh, most interesting thing about it might be the envelope that it came in. But it comes with a set and this card that talks about the specifications of them all. Uh, at this point, uh, there was no longer any silver in these coins. But um, they just came in these little uh, shrink-wrapped uh, little packages. And uh, like I said, they don't have that much value to them. But, I mean, you, you do get pretty coins out of them. Back when they still did make these sets out of silver, the uh, the packaging does remind me of the mint uncirculated sets of the early 60s and the late 50s. So this set is made out of silver. And uh, the, the design on the coins here is going to be pretty much similar to a lot of the others. And uh, this time the little card that comes packaged with it doesn't give you all the nice details to it. But uh, at this point, these coins were 80% silver and they weighed the coins in a really nice way so you could calculate how much silver you're getting out of each one. The $1 coin had exactly 0 0.6000 ounces of silver and the uh, the half dollar was half of that. It was 0 0.300. The quarter was of course a quarter of a dollar so it was 0 0.1500 and then the uh, the the silver dime also at eighty percent. I'm not sure what the math comes to on that. I guess it was about point six point uh, point zero six zero ounces of silver. So you add all that up, and I'm holding in my hands right here one point one one ounces of silver. And so if silver were to hit thirty dollars an ounce, you could do the math in your head pretty easily. That would make this worth thirty three dollars and thirty cents. We're not quite at $30 at the moment, but uh, uh, the premium on these, again, is not very much. Uh, I was able to find this for pretty much right at spot price, and uh, that's what people are looking for these days. The reason I'm making this video in the first place was about a couple months ago, I uh, bought a lot of silver, not silver, uh, but proof quarters and dimes off of uh, eBay in another lot, and it just got me looking, why are there so many proof quarters and dimes that people are selling for face value online? And the reason for that is 
the uh, a lot of these sets just didn't really have that much collector value and then when the price of silver went up the price of the set was really close to the pro the value of the silver content that was inside of it for instance we're going to come to a set like this here in just a moment but uh the uh the amount of silver in this set in american dollars is all, about ten dollars worth and the uh the if you add the the silver coin plus the face value that gets you to about twelve dollars and these sets are going for twelve dollars and so what a lot of people would do was they would open those up they would take the silver coin out and keep it for the silver value and then just dispose of all of the proof coins at face value and uh, break even on it so you can imagine dealers getting them below face value and just trying to unload what they have lots of now these next two coins uh, were not uh, sold in sets like that my oldest canadian dollar dates back to 1939 this one was a commemorative for made for one year but it was a circulating dollar back then the uh, king of england was george the sixth and this particular coin uh, rep is uh, celebrating the time that King George VI visited Canada in 1939. And on the uh, coin here, we have the Canadian Parliament Building. In 1949, they issued their next commemorative dollar in the years between that they had voyager dollars with just the uh, the king on them but in 1949 we still had george the sixth on this side the letters had changed because uh, the king of england was no longer also the emperor of india coming back to this side this coin celebrates the addition of newfoundland into the canadian confederation and the picture of the boat here was uh, the boat called the Matthew, which was uh, for explorer John Cabot, who discovered Newfoundland in 1497. And there is a little bit of uh, Latin writing below the boat, but above the date. And... Uh, I believe that translates to something like long live the newfound land or god bless the newfound land next we're moving ahead to 1958 when we do have queen elizabeth in her 27 year old portrait that appears on a lot of the coins from that era and this is the 1958 british columbia dollar and on the, uh, this dollar, we have the picture of a totem pole. I'm told that that is a bear with the bear's cub as the little face and the, the little, you can see the little uh, feet uh, below the, uh, the mother bear on this one. So this celebrates the 100th anniversary of the first British government entity that uh, appeared in British Columbia, which at the time was called the colony of British Columbia in 1967 Canada celebrated their centennial and they replaced the designs of all of their circulating coins that year with uh, different animals maybe not the penny but they also um, that year were starting to realize that the price of silver was going up and they couldn't continue to make all of their coins out of 80 percent silver the dollar from that year was still 80% silver, but they switched the half and the quarter and, and the dime to 50% silver, didn't tell anyone they were doing it, didn't say when, and so if you have a set, you don't know if you've got the, uh, the version that has 1.11 ounces or if you have the version that doesn't have that. The dollar was always 80%, so it's always going to have a uh, six, uh, 0.6 ounces of silver. And when I think of an animal from Canada, I think of the animal that is all over our neighborhood right now, and that is the Canadian goose, and that's what we see on this $1 coin. So it was the Centennial of Canada, 1867 and 1967. 
Uh, flip it over, we still have the uh, portrait of the queen. So that year, in addition to any regular proof set that they would create, they had a couple of, I don't, I don't remember the exact names of them, but they had a couple of prestige sets that they released that were supposed to be uh, heirlooms, I guess, that, that had um, not only all of the um, proof versions of the replica coins, but there was one set that came with a gold coin that is... Um, uh, had a face value of $20 on it. And, of course, the value of gold has skyrocketed. And if you're ever going to find that set, most of the time they're going to have uh, pulled the gold coin out of it and sold it for almost $1,000. It was a half an ounce of gold, if you can believe that a, a, a mint set would have come with that uh, way back uh, in 1967. The other version of the set, um, which is a little bit easier to find, came with a medallion celebrating the uh, the 100th anniversary. So this is not a circulating coin. It doesn't have a face value, but some people still call it a silver dollar. And in this case, it came in its own little box. Now, there is a brass version of this coin, which was uh, given out to school children. I think there is also a pewter version. And those don't have a lot of value because so many of them were made. Uh, the price guide says that they're worth a quarter. However, this coin was not made with 80% silver. It was made with uh, sterling. So this is going to have uh, roughly 23 grams of silver in it because uh, it was a 25 gram medallion. So we open it up and uh, unusual leather case that it came in here, but... take a look at this side so it's got a maple leaf made out of triangles and it just says the confederation has the uh, the dates on it and this side all it says is canada and has that shield and crown on it so if you're going to pay for it like it's a silver piece make sure that you are getting the silver version and not the brass version this silver coin uh, or medallion has a lot of uh, toning on it. From that point going forward, they did not use silver in any of their circulating coins anymore, but they would continue to put silver into commemorative coins, and we're going to look at some of the packaging of that in a moment, but the earliest one I have is from 1971. I'll uh, make a, a note here for a moment that when you make a video like this, uh, there's a, uh, instinctively you just want to keep buying up every single dollar coin that they made every single year, but then you realize that's going to take forever and it's going to cost a lot of money to try and get every single one. So at some point you just have to stop and make the video and that's where I'm at today. But uh, these commemorative dollars, uh, from at, at least starting at this point, were made with 50% silver. So instead of having 0.6 grams, these are going to have about almost 12 grams of silver in it. And if the... Uh, price of silver spot price of silver was $25 an ounce then a lot of these 50% dollar coins are going to have a bullion value of 950 this year is uh, 1971 we have another british columbia centennial this time it's not uh, the the previous one was the first time they had their own government but this one is uh 1871 is when British Columbia became a part of Canada, and that's what is being celebrated on this coin. And so I guess that is the uh, the shield of British Columbia. Throughout the 70s and the 80s, and I guess on into the 90s, they started calling their sets that had... Um, uh, they would have one of each of the circulating coins plus a silver dollar, and um, a lot of people started referring to them as the double dollar sets. And I've mentioned before that if you add up the spot price of the silver plus the face value of all the coins inside, that's about what I paid for this set. So it doesn't matter if 
the outer sleeve is still on it or if everything is falling apart on the inside but uh, that's what we have here I guess it's interesting that I found this one that still had the uh, the red outer sleeve in it but it does have a, kind of a nice case that it comes with uh, has the uh, interesting seal of Canada on the inside of the box we flip it over and uh, inside this box we have a nice padding here so that when you close it uh, nothing can roll around in it. This particular version of the set has a clear plastic uh, lid on it that I could easily pull that off uh, if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. So here we have all of the regular circulating coins, but then here at the bottom we have the 1973 commemorative dollar. This one celebrates the 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Now, I don't want to pull out this dollar out of the coin, uh, out of this box. I don't know if it's the regular Voyager dollar or if it is the dollar that comes in this envelope. This is another envelope that uh, I paid like $2.25 for, something like that. And uh, this one is just a clad dollar, but it celebrates the centennial of Prince Edward Island being added to Canada in 1873. Otherwise, all the other coins on here are not all the same. We have the uh, uh, the mounted uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police quarter also in this uh, particular uncirculated set. Next, we're moving to 1975 where I have a dollar that came in its own case. Not as fancy as the last ones, and the logo is, is really hard to see any details on that. But uh, we open this one up, and we have the Calgary Centennial of when Calgary was added to uh, Canada. And on this silver coin, uh, it looks like a cowboy that is horseback, and uh, I believe that is uh, um, a city skyline. Right there, we've got an oil derrick over on the other side, and with the date 1875 to 1975. These sets are pretty flimsy. The uh, I'm, I don't know if this was meant to happen, but the little plastic piece comes out with ease, so you can flip it over and see the 39-year-old portrait of the queen, age 39, in that set. Moving on to the next year, we've got the 1976 set where they have the uh, outer cardboard sleeve on here. We take that out and we've got a uh, little case that is similar to the last one. In 1976, we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Library of Parliament. And as we pull this plastic piece out and hold it up to the camera, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of red fuzz that gets <laughs> onto these, and uh, you probably wouldn't have even noticed the red fuzz if I'd left it in the uh, the case there, but that is the 100th anniversary of that building. Portrait of the Queen hadn't changed any on this one. Next we have this 1978 set. I do like how they have the uh, the year written on the side. We've got kind of the similar crest uh, here on the front of the book. And uh, this book is uh, falling apart. I mean, it is uh, almost as old as I am, and I'm falling apart. So, But uh, this one is... Uh, I do really like the design of these, an improvement over the 73 set, because... Uh, it makes it a lot easier to see both sides. And as we say, this is the double dollar set. We've got the circulating do clad dollar right here and the 50% silver up here, where we are celebrating the Commonwealth Games of 1978. And it says XI Games, so I guess that means it's the 11th. But this one you're allowed to flip over and with uh, pretty easily, and you can see the... Uh, the heads side of each of these coins. 
And uh, like previous uh, sets, we do have this uh, nice padding in here, so at least the coins are not going to roll around. A lot of the sets that I've shown don't uh, aren't really all that popular. I guess they overproduced them, and and there just aren't that many collectors for them. The 1984 set uh, has a lot of people that uh, do like it, and this one comes in a uh, an outer plastic case, which is easier to deal with than the sleeve. And uh, this one still has the uh, the specification on it. And the only silver coin is the $1 on the left, where uh, they call this the Toronto and Indian in a canoe. Uh, showing at 50% silver there on the left. So by now we still have uh, the date on the sign and we've replaced the shield with a maple leaf on the front of the packaging, open it up, and this set is a little bit newer, so the uh, the case is in a nicer shape. This one is very reminiscent of the, um, the frequently used Voyager dollar, as we again have the canoe, the, the indigenous uh, gentleman is in the back of the canoe this time. But in the background, instead of an island and a tree, we have the skyline of Toronto. And, of course, the most famous thing in Toronto is probably the CN Tower, which is the uh, really tall tower there in the background. So, I, I believe this one is uh, pretty popular. This is the most expensive set that I had purchased out of all the ones here, but still only $15. And, again, we have the really nice uh, flip over to see the other side. On that one. The outside of the case has this uh, Canadian Mint logo also stamped on the outside of the plastic and uh, I do like that logo. Once you get into the 90s they do start to have more of a premium. I don't know if that's because they uh, picked more interesting topics or if they produced them in smaller quantities but I believe that eventually they stopped using just 50% silver, and they started putting it back to 80% or sterling. But the one I do have is the one from 1991. This one just comes in a nice little cardboard slipcase. It says 1991 on it. it. has Royal Canadian Mint in uh, two different languages. There we have a newer portrait of um, Queen Elizabeth. Flip it over, and we have the... 175th anniversary of the Frontenac, which was the first steamboat made in Canada. That's the last of the, uh, the commemorative $1 silver coins that I have. The next one I have was uh, pulled out of they, they Canada makes all types of commemorative sets these days, uh, celebrating all kinds of different things, and they do a lot of uh, sterling 92.5 percent. This particular one was pulled out of a set that the set by itself was probably goes for uh, 50 or 60 dollars in 2001. That set would be the National Ballet set, but I thought this two dollar coin was very interesting. Now the $2 coin is actually a smaller size than the um, the Voyager dollars that we've been looking at. So this one contains about $6 worth of silver to it, but I think that is a uh, fantastic coin. So the the silver part is 92.9% silver. The middle portrait of the queen is gold plated. Now, of course, the real $2 doesn't have gold in it, and this one is just plated, so there's no actual gold weight to it. But having the gold plating there, it really makes it look uh, fantastic. Uh, flipping over, this is the uh, Polar Bear $2 coin, so we can now see the, uh, the Polar Bear in gold in this uh, mirror-like proof coin. Yeah, this one's going to have about 8 grams of silver in it. 
Before I end this video, I might as well include some of the uh, clad commemorative dollars that I have. This one again comes in a leather case. This one makes it a little bit easier to open on the side. But this one is, for whatever reason, not uh, actually protecting the coin on the inside. So uh, this one is going to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Manitoba being added to uh, Canada. And so uh, there is uh, no protective case on this. I could pop that dollar out uh, if I wanted to without any problem. In 1977, it was the 25th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth's reign. That would be considered the silver anniversary, and you'd think they'd make a silver anniversary or silver jubilee coin out of silver. No, this is still a clad coin, but uh, this one contains the throne of the Senate. Flip it over. The portrait is the same, but it is a little bit smaller, so they could put the dates of Queen Elizabeth's reign up to that point on here, 52 through 77. One other uh, proof type set that I have is this. And again, these don't have a lot of value. They're more, uh, they have more value than the ones that come in the envelope. But this comes again in a padded case. Uh, we get a close-up look of the logo on here. And again, it's got a... A cushion on it this cushion is falling apart I've owned this for probably 20 years it has a little card in here that explains everything that's in here no silver but the this is considered an uncirculated set but this is a uh, for the most part a mirror-like proof I do think it's interesting that they add a second penny that does make it worth another cent but uh, uh, it even still has the inspected by number seven in this one. I bet most people don't uh, keep that. But here is our uh, clad dollar from the 77 set. This is the year I was born, so that's why I bought this one several years ago. The last dollar we're going to look at today is the clad 1984 dollar. This one is not only a proof, but the, uh, the portrait is frosted. And in 1984, they were honoring the 450th anniversary of explorer Jacques Cartier from France, who explored the Gulf of St. Lawrence in 1534. So it's interesting on this one how they gave the, the frosted proof to uh, Cartier and, and a couple of his men. And then the rest of the background is uh, more of a mirror-like look. If you like Canadian coins, at the end of this video, I'm going to link to a couple of other videos I've made over the past year. One of them is going to be the what I call the evolution of the Canadian quarter. And just like these dollar coins, I don't have all of them because you have to start somewhere. And then I made another video which uh, shows off the large uh, collection of proof quarters and dimes that I picked up in one large eBay lot. So... Uh, if you enjoy Canadian coins, please check out those videos as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.